This episode was sponsored by Santos Threads. Make sure to visit Santos-Threads for the latest and greatest in men's and women's Latino hip-hop-inspired streetwear apparel. Visit santos-threads.com. Hey, you are now listening to the Santos Says Podcast, episode number 25. And it is I, your host, Santos, proud owner of Santos Threads. Welcome once more to another edition. Today you have Santos flying solo once again. Uh, Happy to be back. Uh, First of all, Make sure you guys follow me on social media, of course. Uh, Instagram, Santos Thread Shop, and TikTok. Yes, I have a TikTok. Um, It's a necessary evil. It's not my favorite thing to do, but um, I am posting a little bit on there as well. So, uh, which is the same Santos Thread Shop at TikTok and Instagram, Santos Thread Shop. Welcome once more. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button. It helps the channel grow, the Santos Says Podcast. So um, I want to send a special shout out to everyone who listens, who watches me on YouTube, listens to the audio stream on Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, Apple. I'm even on Google Podcasts, believe it or not, too, which I don't plug much, but I am on the on uh, that platform too, so you could find uh, yours truly on there. But uh, thank you all for the for the for the love, for the respect, for the the comments, and a special shout out to the trolls too. I see you guys, and um, so uh, just just really happy with where this uh, this whole thing is headed on the journey. I'm really really excited. Uh, make sure you check out the merch as well. We got some really nice merch out there um, that we released on the website and, um, you know, getting ready for the holiday season as well. So you guys already know, look out for uh, more stuff to come, more stuff on the way. On this episode, what I want to do is I want to make sure, see, I had this this topic already on the tip of my tongue for quite some time. And I kind of was going back and forth on it if I was going to actually talk about it. And I'm going to get into it in a moment. On this episode, I am going to ask the question. I am going to bring up this point. Is natural beauty dead? And when I ask this question, I'm talking in in particular, specifically in reference to women. Is natural beauty dead? I will be making, I will be talking about this and I will be asking this question and giving my point of view from a man's perspective, right? Based on what we see on uh, in today's society, through social media, through um, through in our walks of life, daily walks of life, um, the regular media, right? What we would call the uh, TV, TV media, um, the box office, all that stuff. So internet, we'll talk about that. So we're gonna get into this. I want to talk about, this is the question I have, and this is going to be the theme of this show, of this particular episode. Is natural beauty dead from the vantage point of a man where I'm going to give my perspective and I'll touch uh, this topic and talk about it, break it down for you guys. But I want to know, I'm asking this question because this is something that I've thought about for a long time. Because as I notice, as, as you scroll through your social media, whether you are on TikTok, whether you are on Instagram, whether you are on whatever, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, name the platform, or whether you are taking a stroll down your neighborhood, down your neck of the woods, you're seeing something very prevalent. And what am I going to say? I'm going to get into this right now. And I I went back and forth with myself because I'm like, well, Santos, you don't want to offend this group. Oh, you don't want to offend this group. You don't want to offend that group, this person. No, enough of that. I got to get into it and I'm going to do it right now. We're going to get into it right now. Santos is going to go where Santos is going to go. And that's what it's going to do. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to say. So, of course, respectfully, truly yours. I'm always going to be respectful, respectful, right? A gentleman, 
But I got to call it how I see it. I got to tell the truth. So you walk around your neck of the woods. You go on social media. You go wherever. I don't care where you're going. Costco, Walmart, uh, the neighborhood bodega, wherever you live, right? And I guarantee you at this point, you've run into somebody or you've seen somebody with collagen, with Botox, who puts on too much makeup, with eyelashes that were stolen off of a mink, a mink, an actual animal, mink, and that are like do like circles like five times, do like five rotations on their eyes, that they're a skeptical, uh, a spectacle on their own. Yeah. Yes. We've all seen those people, right? And this is not to judge. I'm not judging. I just want to simply talk about the current condition of today, of where we are as a society. Okay. So we're going to get into this because I, I don't like where this is headed. See, full disclosure, I am a parent of two and um, I am a father of two. One of my children so ha just so happens to be a daughter. I have a female, you know, a daughter. So I have a son and I have a, a daughter, right? Um, and so my daughter, eventually she's still, she's young. She's very young. She's only five years old. She's going to grow up in this world where it's becoming more and more normal to see people with, with plastic surgery. And it's becoming the standard of beauty. And that's what's worrying me as a parent. You know, there's going to be a time where I have to have a conversation with my daughter. I don't know when it'll be, but I'm going to have to go face to face with my daughter and say, hey, listen, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that to blend in or to, to, to you know, because it's becoming the norm. The society's norm is, is what is becoming uh, this whole phenomenon of um, what I like to call the, the fake. But the fake, which is the, the plastic surgery, um, you know, the Botox, the lip injections, the, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing young girls at 24 years old doing Botox, you know, uh, Botox injections, uh, injections, you know, and that is very troubling because it's a system of, it's a symptom of where, of our reality right now. It's our reality of, as a society. And I, quite frankly, am very concerned about where we're headed as a society. I'm going to start out with this. I would like to read a couple quotes for all you guys, because we got to start this out right. Let's start this out right. Okay. Here we go. I have quotes for you from yours truly, Santos quotes. I start with this. You are naturally beautiful when you are yourself. I'm going to repeat this quote because this is a very nice quote. You are naturally beautiful when you are yourself. So what happens in society? These young girls that are coming up now are seeing these quote unquote influencers or role models putting Botox, fake lip implants, fake butt injections, you know, butt injections, tummy tuck. Um, in some instances, people injecting things so they can have more pigment. I've seen this too, unfortunately, um, because of different pressures or, um, you know, certain kinds of um, insecurities, which everybody has securities, uh, insecurities. I get that, right? But so you're seeing now younger and younger girls going to the operating table to emulate what they see. Why? Because it's everywhere. You can't avoid it. I don't want to just blame one or two people, but I'm going to blame one or two people. I'm talking to you, Kardashians. To I, when I think of the Kardashians, and this is no disrespect to, to them or what they've done, I think what they've done as far as like moguls, as far as being uh, business women, you know, the foresight to be able to market themselves. I've never seen people that have no talent, make it as far as they did. And so that is, it sounds like an insult. It's not a backhanded compliment, but it's the truth. Um, you know, I've never seen 
people with less talent make it that far. So I'm talking about you, Kylie Jenner. Um, I'm talking about you, <laughs> Kardashians, all, all of them. I don't want to name all their names. You know who I'm talking about, Kim and Courtney and Chloe and even the mom. Like they got no talent and they've made it so far. They have great business acumen and they realized that there was a, a market for them, right? Um, as celebrities. The problem I have is how some of their decisions have negatively impacted the stigmas, uh, uh, the, um, excuse me, not stigma, that have negatively impacted society as far as the standard of beauty. You have women who, you know, everybody wants to have a butt, which butts are beautiful, right? But let's be honest, like, you you don't you know we've we've seen cases of of young ladies going to traveling to different countries to get affordable surgery right at a lesser rate and never return home because they die on the operating table because they all that because they they were faced with the pressures of trying to keep up with the kardashians no pun intended but it just so happened to work out right so you know what i'm talking about so that is what we're seeing. And so with those pressures come anxiety and depression, um, trying to live up to that standard of beauty, which in essence, you know, they can continue to do different surgery, but they're never happy. And we're seeing this. And so, like I said, to take it back to me being a dad, those are some of the things that concern me as a father, having to explain all this stuff one day having to deal with it, you know, one day, I never know, you know, one day my daughter might come to me and say, I want to do this, I want to do that. That's when the tough conversations need to be had. And quite frankly, when she becomes of a certain age, there's nothing I can do to stop it, you know? And so those are the things that kind of um, worry me a little bit when I see all this, you know, I got to be honest. So let me give you guys another quote, okay? Being natural isn't a statement. It is the closest thing you can get to being yourself. Okay? I'll read it again. Being natural isn't a statement. It is the closest thing you can get to being yourself. So what happens? These young ladies are faced with these pressures to measure up to, to the Kardashians and other influencers. And unfortunately, most times they're going to fall short because they don't have the resources that a lot of these women have, or they don't have the wherewithal, or quite frankly, they're just not them. They are not them. And, and that's sad. You know, that makes me sad that we're, we're in that society because we've become this society that everything is in front of our face, right? Everything is there at our fingertips. We can live in all these different worlds just with our own device, our computers, our tablets, our phones, our TVs, right? We can live in a different world and just escape and just immerse ourselves in these devices for what and, and get lost in it. And so that is what we're seeing. And so that just makes me, it just makes me upset because also with that, right? With the social media also lends the filters, right? The filters. I want to talk about this, the filters, right? We are out of hand, people, with the filters. Now, I, I know that, just full disclosure, I know there's probably men who use filters too, but in this instance, we're talking about women and natural beauty and some of the issues that are going on now, right? Uh, with appearance and stuff, with the rising pressures. You know, in this era with the rising pressures for physical appearance and social media, validation right? All these things. And so I just can't believe like we're in that time where just everything is just so fake. Like it's hard to tell what's real, right? It's hard to tell what's real. And with that comes deeper issues because there are out, there are underlying issues there with all these filters. Now, if you're having, you're having, you're using filters to have fun, you know, here and there, you're going to use filters and have fun. That, that's what it's there for, to have fun. They're playful. 
But what I'm talking about is I'm referring to the to some of those young ladies who are dealing with, like I mentioned before, insecurities, right? Which we all have them, dealing with insecurities to the point that they never on their social media, they don't even post a picture or a video without having a filter. Why is that? Why is that? because of the insecurities. Where do the insecurities come from? The insecurities come from not being able to measure up to the standard of beauty that these women who are full of surgery have set. Unrealistic expectations. And they're there. These unrealistic expectations are set. You're never gonna meet that expectation. You're not gonna look like Kim Kardashian because Kim Kardashian is her is Kim Kardashian, right? Jane Doe, to use a, a, a you know a random name example, right? Jane Doe is Jane Doe. So if you're Jane Doe, you could never be Kim Kardashian. You could have dark hair. You could put Botox, right, in your lips until you're blue in the face, fake eyelashes, get butt implants, make a couple bucks. You're never going to be Kim Kardashian. She did that first. That was Kim Kardashian. So now you're trying to live up to the expectation that she set. What about Kylie Jenner, the younger one? Because she's the one right now that's like out of here. Like she's got the money, all the money, everything. She's bigger than everybody right now as far as that whole um, group over there, right? What about her? She's influencing the younger generation, the ones that are going to come. The ones that are right now dancing on your TikToks, that are doing stuff on Instagram, that are posting videos on YouTube, the ones that are, are creating um, OnlyFans accounts. Yeah, that's a separate issue, but I'm just I just want to mention it, right? Yes, those. That's what they're doing. But what happens? They're using filters. They won't post pictures of themselves. You know, with filters, you could take off, you can get rid of acne, you can get rid of gray hair, you can get rid of a couple pounds, you can change your skin tone, you can change your eyes, you can change anything. You make your nose a little thinner if you want, make your nose smaller, make your lips bigger. Yeah, I understand these little things that they're showing, but the filters are not permanent. But the issues, the psychological issues, the damage, the pressure of having to fit and meet that, meet that standard that the influencers and the other famous people have set, those things are there. They're very real. And the filters are just another uh, reflection of that. These, so these young ladies are, are damaged. They're scarred inside. They don't wanna ever post images or, or produce content without having filters. And it's heartbreaking when you see this. And this is a real, real bad thing that we're seeing. Talking about social media, I want to go into this segment right here. This is my, my uh, segment called What Santos Said. Now, the way it works is I will play um, a clip. I will play a video audio clip um, of, from a previous episode and then I will react to it. So that's how it works. So this is Santos, uh, what Santos said. On this episode, this was episode 18, that was called Mindfulness and Mental Health. Um, I had a special guest, a licensed social worker, uh, Nancy Reyes, who was there with me. And um, we're talking a little bit about society today. And so I'm going to uh, share, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm gonna share my screen. If you're listening, follow along and uh, you'll be able to hear this. So we're gonna get into it right now. We get caught up in the image mm -hmm. of what we see, especially now more than any other time mm -hmm. in our in the history of, of our civilization, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is so like instant gratification. Everything mm -hmm. is all about the moment, about mm -hmm. what this one is doing, the dance, the, the happiness, and their best life, they're rich, right? Mm -hmm. You see people with money and are, and we don't know, and I think it's important to keep that in perspective because, again, it could be detrimental mm -hmm. to our health. 
So basically my point there, which uh, the licensed social worker, Nancy Ray is really so elegantly uh, discussed with me there. We got into some of the, the things about social media and the pressures that it puts on people. And so a lot of what, you know, a lot of the things we talked about was just based on that, just the pressures that social media puts on as far as like having to show a facade, right? Having to show like, this is how we live. This is us, right? This is who we are. Um, you know, th this is what it is, right? This is how we live and this is my life all the time. And that's not the case. And so that's what this is. Social media places pressure on appearance. It puts pressure because what happens is we're looking at social media and again, this is where the influencers, this is where the famous people come into play. This puts an emphasis on that. This puts this puts pressure, added pressure on these all, all these young ladies and men too, on all of us, right? To have to live up to a certain standard of beauty. And it's it's sad, you know. Um, it's sad that this is where we're, where we're at as a society, you know? So I want to ask the question now, um, cause I don't have the answer. I'm curious to know what all of your thoughts are and by all means, chime in, comment, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're following me on social media, let's get the conversation going. Um, cause I'm curious to know what your takes are. Am I off base? Am I going too far? Am I, do you agree with me? Just either way, let me know. Let me know what you guys are, are thinking. Um, so the issue is that you have, you know, and I understand things evolve, right? So the issue is we have all these pressures put on people. You're seeing girls younger and younger getting surgery and to, to, to hold up, to measure up <clears throat> to that standard of beauty. And see, I'm all for people, um, you know, being able to make choices and to, to do what's in their best interest and, you know, making themselves feel better, look better. I'm all for that. The, but when I have a problem is when we have as a society an issue with, you know, shaming. And I've seen this, you know, now you got girls being shamed because of their natural appearance, right? Because if, if they naturally don't have a lot of, you know, let's say they don't have a ton of curves, they don't have a lot of large breasts, they don't have a large and shape, uh, shapely uh, backside, right? Or if they're overweight, um, or if their tummy is not quite up to the standard of the surgery, the surgery that we're seeing out here, right? Of some of these other women. Um, this is the, I see, you're seeing shaming now. So we've gotten to a, a place where we are shaming women who are natural or women who don't want to wear makeup, right? You got women who are gorgeous, who don't need to wear makeup, who look absolutely stunning, who don't need makeup. And they're being shamed because they refuse to wear, you know, cake face. They don't want to wear all this makeup. They don't want to get fake uh, lips or, uh, you know, they're happy with themselves. And they're trying to drag them in to that world by making them feel bad about themselves so that they can feel like they're not sufficient or they're so that they can feel like they're not, you know, up to snub, right? And that's where I have an issue. It's one thing to want to make yourself look better or to if you have some some confidence issues and you want to make yourself look better and enhance yourself. That's one thing. It's another thing to try to shame other young ladies who don't want to do it, who who rather be natural. Don't do that. Don't normalize this plastic garbage and try to make the women who are natural, who are beautiful with minimal effort, to make them think that they're not beautiful. I got a news flash for you. It's the other way around. Okay. The natural beauty always wins. Okay. Because it's it, it comes from the earth. It comes from above, right? I'm not going to get religious on you guys, but you know what I mean? It comes from the creator. Okay. It comes from natural nature. Okay. 
You can't get that. You can't buy that. You can't buy natural. Okay. And there are plenty of women who are naturally beautiful with minimal effort, who don't need to have the cake face, uh, um, who don't, you know, got to go too crazy with the makeup, who even don't even have to work out a lot. I've seen that too, right? Who don't need to work out a lot, who, you know, keep themselves good looking because that's what it is, right? Because they, they're confident. The confidence also makes a woman attractive too, right? When you have that confidence. And so I'm all about that. I'm for building that confidence in society. And so I'm hoping that we can kind of swing the pendulum back the other way to kind of bring the, the bring that back, the good vibes of the, the natural beauty. Um, that includes, you know, not having to use as much makeup, right? Uh, looking, you know, there's nothing wrong with makeup. Makeup is beautiful. Like use makeup, right? Makeup is meant to enhance your beauty. It's not meant to create something that wasn't there. Remember that. Okay. Makeup is, is an enhancer. It can enhance things, accentuate, right? Accentuate yourself. It's not meant to, to create an illusion that doesn't exist. Remember that. So, and I'm speaking all this from a man's vantage point. So what I want to do is I want to just, as, as a man, I want to offer some of my thoughts on this from just as the man, right? From a man's stand, uh, standpoint. Ladies, less is more. Less is more. I know that, you know, a lot of men won't say this, especially if they're trying to just, you know, court a woman. They're trying to get with a woman. They're not saying this. They ain't going to say this shit. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it though. Okay. Less is more. Okay. What I mean by that. The woman who is naturally beautiful with minimal effort will always stand out over the woman who's trying too hard. Always. Nine times out of 10. Now you do have the exception. You do have those guys that will try to hunt down anything that's walking, which is always scary. Right? <laughs> you have those men that, hey, if she has a pulse and a heartbeat, I'm going to try to get it. Wink. Like that's who they are. So that you there's a lot of that too um to be honest i i've seen it so um and, and that's unfortunate too because like come on do you really want to be doing that i mean come on guy like but um i've seen that let me talk about the eyelashes i want to put this subject out there because I'm, i've been adamant with the eyelash thing the eyelash thing is out of control right now okay <laughs> I'm going to, and again, comment, please, by all means, comment. If I'm crazy, if you buy your eyelashes, like if you love those eyelashes that do like five circles around your eyes, comment, please. I want to hear it. I want all of it. If you don't, if you do, if I'm crazy, if I'm not crazy, whatever, I don't, I don't get into that. The whole thing is to start the discussion, to talk about things, to engage, right? That's the whole purpose of this. And so that's what I wanted to do here in this episode. Less is more. That includes eyelashes. So, you know, I know it's a trend. And again, it goes back to the Kardashians. They're part of that. They have the fake eyelashes. They set that standard for, of beauty. And so I'm here to say, ladies, you don't need all those eyelashes to look beautiful. You are beautiful without all those eyelashes. You know, there was something called mascara that they used to use. You know, I don't know if women still use that, but um, I know I know what that is for because my mom raised me and my mom used to always put it and it worked fine on my mom you know my mom's got beautiful eyelashes i love my mom so <laughs> but i'm just saying right she's got the eyelashes there are plenty of things you could do with eyelashes um you know um plenty of women that have can do stuff with their eyelashes so it's not um it's not rocket science right um, but I guess it's, again, it's those pressures to keep up. There's pressures to keep up and, 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 you know, and we're seeing that, you know, your eyelashes shouldn't arrive before you do when you walk into a, into a, a venue, like, <laughs> like if your eyelashes arrive before you do, you have problems. Okay. There's an issue. Like, you know, I've seen plenty of women that they, hi, like their eyelashes are saying hello to you first. 
before they walk in. So it's kind of, it's a little scary to be honest with you. It's a little creepy. It's a little creepy, a little bit. I don't care what the rest of her looks like. Having that eyelash like that is just it's a little out there. It's a little much. But um, so what I'm saying is less is more. Okay. Um, what kind of man do you think you're going to attract if you're coming out with the, you know, you, you went and did your whole body, you did your face, you did, you got the eyelashes out. Think about that for a second. Let that marinate. What kind of man do you think you're going to attract? Now, you could attract a man who's a good man, who's got his priorities straight, who is a guy who's going to be a gentleman to you, who's going to always respect you, and who's going to love you for what you have in, within, right? But it's not likely. It's not likely. It's not likely, folks. More than likely, you're going to attract a certain kind of male coming out like that. Yes, I'm talking to you. Whoever's listening, you are going to attract a certain kind of man looking like that because you're you're trying so hard. Like from I'll give you the man's point of view, like from my vantage point, like I see I see somebody like that. Like it just looks like they're trying hard, like they're just trying too hard. And it makes you think. Um, you know, it makes you think, man, like she went through all that effort to do that, like. Like, is that what she's all about? Like, is she just about herself? Like, that's just me. Now, again, everybody thinks different, but I'm just giving you my perspective as a man. Um, it makes you think, like, what is, right? What else is there? And so it's hard to be taken serious when you look like, you know, in a 24-hour day, you're dedicating 23 hours to just yourself. And so be mindful of that. Now, again, take care of yourself. Put on makeup, use it to your liking, right? Use makeup. If you want to go to the gym, go to the gym. If you want to accentuate certain things by by you know shapewear, or if you want to um, you know, go on a diet, you want to do squats, you want to do there's so many things you could do um that make you stand out, that make you be, you know, make you look your best without having to conform, without having to uh, stoop to that level of beauty, <clears throat> right? Of uh, the standard. So I just wanted to talk about that. And um, just remember, just less is more. Less is more. And again, let's not shame, just, just taking it back to a previous point I made. Let's not shame the women who are natural or the young girls coming up who are natural. Let's not make this the norm. This shouldn't be the norm, okay? Let's not make it the norm, okay? Natural beauty will always trump anything that you could put together in a, surger, in a surgeon's office or anything that you can you know, put together with plastic aesthetics and too much makeup on your face, all that stuff. And again, this was just one man's opinion, okay? Yours truly. Um, again, that that was it. That was what I had. That's episode number twenty-five. Um, again, don't forget to uh, follow me on social media: the the TikTok Santos Thread Shop, um, Instagram Santos Thread Shop, and um, let me know your thoughts. You agree? You disagree? Whatever it may be, definitely um, curious to to know your points. Let me know what you guys think. What is your what are your thoughts on, on um, plastic surgery? Uh, are we too far gone? Is there too much plastic surgery now? What are your thoughts on fake eyelashes? Have we gone too far or are we good? Should we just make more? Uh, should we? Should the eyelashes get longer? What do you guys think? So that was episode 25, um, definitely. So that was all. And of course, as always, don't just say what you mean or mean what you say. Say it with your chest. Peace.